Hi, this is Stephen Gregg, and I'm here telling my story again on the mindset of a trailblazer. And I'm now going to be talking about um, kind of finishing up what we went over last time, which was um, I had just, you know, was going through a really bad depression kind of because I just broke up with this girl, and, and I was at my house. I remember it so vividly. It was pretty unbelievable how God sprang into life at this point and sprang into action. It's pretty unbelievable. But it was kind of interesting. I was sitting on my bed, and I remember we had just broke up, and I remember sitting there, and I didn't have a job. So I was looking for um, a, a job, and I was kind of discouraged, and then I looked in my closet, and in my closet, there was one piece of newspaper, and not the whole newspaper, just one piece. So what I did was I grabbed that piece of newspaper, and I opened it up, and I was looking through it, and I circled two jobs, and I called them both, and one of them... Um, did not let me come in for an interview, but the other one did let me come in. This was a Thursday. So on that Friday, I went to the um, job interview. And after I went to the job interview, um, it was interesting because it was a, I forgot, it was a company that does merchant services. I remember that very vividly. So they interviewed, on, interviewed me on Friday, and they hired me on the spot. Usually they take a week or two to hire you, but they hired me on the spot because they had a training coming up that Monday. And they wanted me to be in that training. So I said, okay, no problem, I'll go to that training. So what I did was, that, um, so that Friday night I went out and I went to a party and I was drinking again and, you know, really discouraged and, and depressed. And then that Saturday I did the same thing. I went out to another club. Actually, I went to the same club where me and um, that girl used to go out dancing. And I was really discouraged that day. I was really, you know, discouraged because now I'm by myself. And, you know, I was, dr again, drinking a lot. And, and then I, that sa Saturday came and... And, and did the same thing and then Sunday I did the same exact thing and I remember on Sunday was a little different though because Sunday um, I had bought a couple bottles of, of beer big bottles of beer huh, 40 ounce beer <laughs> it was really bad I had two of them and I was sitting in my car and I remember I had the Bible there so I'm reading the Bible drinking beer and you know because I'm convicted I'm, I'm convicted in my heart I didn't I knew something was going on so I'm just reading through the scripture and so uh, that was Sunday night. Monday, I wake up and I go to the training Monday, and it was a it was a day of training. I don't remember anything about the training, but I remember it was a day at, at the office there in the training. And then that night, Monday, I came home, and I was really down, really discouraged, really depressed. So I went and got three bottles of beer and was sitting in my car because I didn't want to go in the house because Malcolm was in there um, and we were good friends. So I I just sat in the car. And I opened up the Bible again. And I remember I read one scripture that made the difference. And that one scripture was Romans 8, 28. It said, uh, for uh, God, uh, for, for those, those who, um, wait, wait, for all things work for the good for those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. And I had learned that sentence years and years and years before because Kevin Trudeau used to, used to use that scripture in business. He'd say, um, everything works for the good. And I believe that. But when I read the scripture, it actually said something different. It said, uh, for everything works for the good for those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. So I just started asking myself some questions. So now I'm reading the Bible and I really, really realized that it says something different. I was like, well, it says those who love the Lord. Love the Lord. What does that mean to love the Lord? And so I started looking at it and I started saying to myself, who do I love or who do I say I love? And I said, well, I love that girl Mia. I said I did because I flew out here for her. I'm, I moved out here because of her. I, I went to Grambling University looking for her. I, I did all this crazy stuff because I said I loved her. I said, okay. Who else did I say I love? I said I love this girl named Frida. And I thought I had loved her. And, and Gabby, I thought I loved her. And, and I wrote off all the reasons why I thought I loved them. Then I said, okay, well, what about God? Um, how do I love God? And I said, well, um, and I couldn't come up with any reasons. So then I got really convicted and I said, well, let's imagine if I was married to that girl, Mia, and I, and I went and I, uh, every day I'd come home from work and I'd beat her up or I didn't work and I didn't take care of the family and I kicked the dog and I beat the kids and did all that stuff. But then every day I came home and said I loved her, would she believe me? And I said, no. So I looked down and I said, 
Well, every day I go out partying, I get drunk, I mess, do all the stuff with these girls, and I do all these different things in the Bible that are sin. So why would God believe I love him? And I was like, okay, he wouldn't. So then I got a pen and paper. I remember I got a pen and paper out, and I wrote down all the qualities I wanted of a wife. I wrote down, I wanted a wife that was God-fearing, that was beautiful, that was respectful, that loved me and loved the Lord and would take care of my kids. I wrote down all these qualities of my perfect wife. And I said, where in the world am I going to find that person? I said, back in that church. That's the only place I'm going to find her. I said, okay, that's it. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going back to the church. And I did. And so I called John right there. I said, John, hey, buddy, I'd like to study the Bible again. I'm ready. I'm ready to start studying it out. And he said, you sure? I said, definitely. I'm ready. I'm ready this time. Let's do it. He goes, okay, let's do it on Wednesday. So remember, this is Monday. So on Wednesday, uh, he said, we're going to study the Bible. So we set it up on our calendar. So then I go back to um, the, the training the next day because it was a two-day training. So I go back to training on Tuesday. And as soon as I walked in, I remember walking in through the back door instead of the front door. Walked in through the back door. As soon as I walked in, the very first person I walked into was a guy named Chris Benjamin. Now, Chris Benjamin um, was a friend of mine from years before that actually knew John Verdes because they would go to the same church. And Chris used to study the Bible with me also. It was me, Chris, and John. See, John was the leader of the study, but Chris was right there with him. They'd always study in pairs. So Chris was there with me. So I looked at Chris and I said, Chris? He goes, yeah, what's up, Stan? I said, what's going on, man? He goes, nothing much. How you doing? I said, yeah. I said, what are you doing here? He goes, I work here. I was like, you work here? He goes, yeah. I said, wow. I said, Chris, do you still go to that church? He said, yeah, I still go to that church. And I looked up. I said, okay, God. I get it. Okay. So what happened is that day um, I said, you know, me and John have a Bible study on Wednesday. I was wondering if um, you would like to be there. He goes, yeah, I, I'd love to be there. I'd love to be there. No problem. I, I, I absolutely would be there for you. I said, okay, so here's where we're going to meet. We're going to meet at this restaurant. And um, we went to the restaurant together. Um, and we, we, we were going to study the Bible. Actually, um, me and John met at the restaurant first, I forgot. And then uh, me and Chris and, and John were going to meet at Chris's house that, that, um, that Thursday night. And I, I think it was either Thursday night or Friday night, I can't remember. But whatever night it was, um, I had a fork in the road. Because I didn't believe they were going to call me on time. They said they were going to call me right at 9 o'clock. Chris was supposed to call me at 9. I didn't believe it. So I decided I'm going partying. It's like I always did. It was a habit ingrained in me. So I did. I went to a place called the Shark Club in Costa Mesa. And so I'm standing in line at the Shark Club. And I remember this vividly. And the reason I'm tearing up is because, man, just that fork in the road, if I would have gone a different direction, uh, man. But I remember sitting there um, five minutes to nine. I, I'm in line. I give the guy my um, $10 bill. And I give him my ID. As soon as I give it to him, I look down at my phone. It's 9 o'clock on the nose. Chris calls me right on the button. And I look at my phone, and now I have a decision to make. Am I going to go to the Bible study? Or am I going to go to the club? This time, I made the right decision. And I went to the Bible study. I got my $10 back and I said, you know, I got to leave. And I left and I went and I studied the Bible with Chris and with, uh, with John. And I'm going to tell you, I just look at my life right now and I look at what happened from that point on. And um, I just can't imagine I have gone the other direction. Like the first time when I made the mistake with for, towards Kevin, because I was my God. Um, God was using that because of what He taught me. I, you're gonna hear in a little bit later as as I go into more scripture, more more things in my life. Um, God used what He taught me for good, just like He said He does. 
man, I just think if I would have decided to go to the club that night, oh man, life would have been dramatically different. And uh, so I studied the Bible with John and with Chris. And this time I decided to get baptized. And October 17th, 1999, I went to the church and I got baptized in water for the forgiveness of my sins. And I received the gift of the Holy Spirit. And I was a new creation. I was born again that day. And I remember that day clearly. Um, because Malcolm was there. A lot of my friends were there. Chris and John were there. And a lot of people were there from the church. But um, it was so cool because, I mean, just throw this in there. But a few, months, a few days later, Malcolm studied the Bible and got baptized also on October 31st that year. And, um, you know, my life has impacted so many people since then, but more importantly, God impacted me. He, he saved me from this world. He brought me out. And that was just the beginning of my journey. That was the beginning. God had been leading me up to this point through business opportunity after business opportunity through situation, through challenges, through ups and through downs. I mean, I've been through so many different situations in my life. Uh, I recorded some of them here, but a lot of them I didn't because it would just be way too long. <laughs> but I can tell you, God led me to this point to get my sins forgiven that day. And I can't wait to tell you the rest of the story because from this point, that's when I was born again. That's when I was baptized for the forgiveness of my sins. That's when I was added to the body of Christ. That's when I was a new creation and I was born again and, and life was different. You know, I, I was forgiven of my sins. Still had a lot of stuff to work through, personally, but I was forgiven. And I am so grateful for, for God for, for allowing me to go through what I went through to get to this point. So in the next video, I'm going to be sharing with you, you know, what happened from then, from that point. Because that was just the beginning of the journey. Oh man, it, it gets much better, much worse. Much worse and much better at the same time um, from that point. But that was the beginning of my walk with God and the, the different change of my life. Um, and so make sure you subscribe to our channel, you know. Subscribe to my channel and click that bell button because if you do, you'll get notified every time I upload a new video. And I'm trying to upload one you know, every day. I'm doing my best to get one every day for you. So, um, you know, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. And I'll be back with the next video.